G'day guys. Our season is officially over. We have no trophies to compete for. We're finished. 2-0 on the night, 4-0 on aggregate, and it is a severely disappointing end to our season. Not because of the performance, but because of the result. And the fact that we have made it to the stage and gone out quite gallantly, I must say, but still in a fashion where we look so incompetent in the attacking third, it's very, very upsetting. And Real Madrid are a very classy outfit and it was always gonna be a tough ask, but we did our very best. And that's all you can ask for as a Chelsea fan sometimes. In this episode, we will be versing Atletico Madrid away from home in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And then straight after that, we will verse Leeds in the Premier League. And that will conclude our episode for today. And as you can see, there's going to be lots of big games coming up towards the end of our season. Obviously, some huge fixtures against the Manchester clubs towards the end, the end of this month and then a tough end to the season, especially in the Premier League, coming up against some sides that are definitely in form in the career mode. Whilst we'll be trying to defeat Atletico Madrid in game, in real life, it was Real Madrid that did get the upper hand, the current holders of the cup, showing how formidable they are as a side. And I must say, the game went exactly how I expected, you know, the fact that they were able to secure a 2-0 lead in the first leg set them up for success so that they could come to Stamford Bridge and play a bit more solid, a bit more compact, a little bit more defensive and just allow Chelsea to come onto them and, and create a siege mentality and then just pounce and, and create swift counter attacks. And whilst I do think Chelsea played very, very well for the first 55 minutes of the game, uh, it was always going to end this way, I feel like. We were just going to continuously create some good attacking play, keep possession really well and look defensively solid, but not be able to put the ball in the net. And at the end of the day, that's what this game's all about, is putting that damn ball in the back of the net. Now, I'm going to come out with an opinion that might be a hot take, but I think it's the God honest truth. And if you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. I do not blame Frank Lampard for this result tonight. I blame solely the players that are on the field. And not because they're bad players, not because they performed terribly, but because they cannot get the job done. Coming into a quarterfinal at Stamford Bridge against Real Madrid, one of the biggest clubs in world football, if not the biggest. You are definitely going to be psyched up for this experience. I know before the game, I was you know, very apprehensive. I didn't believe we could do it, but I was still excited and optimistic that something magical could happen. A miracle could be pulled off. And when we started the game off so positively, you know, we played really compact in the center of the park, did not allow Real Madrid to pass the ball around and create anything in the, in the middle of the park between Cruz and Modric. And you have to give credit to Frank Lampard for that in the way he set up the team with the formation, you know, with the three midfielders with uh, Kante, Kovacic and Enzo in the middle there. And then Gallagher ahead of them, just running around like the ball of energy that he always is. So you have to give credit to Lampard. He set the team up well with the assets at our disposal. And yet, whilst we were able to put Real Madrid under immense pressure, we just weren't able to put the ball in the net. And when Kante had that shot early in the first half and it went just past the post with his left foot, if that went in, the entire game would have been different because then we would have had our tails up, we would have been pushing forward and we would have had something to get behind and something that we could, something that would have proved that we could beat this team. And whilst we did play well, and we made Real Madrid look second fiddle to us, I think in the end, we were playing into their hands and favoring Carlo Ancelotti's tactics, which was to be compact, sit back and defend, 
and counter and be precise with your attacking movements. And they did. And that's exactly what happened with Rodrigo making that swift movement down the sideline, beating Chalabar, who should have stayed at his feet. Terrible defending. But he was able to just breeze past and score a goal. And then the second goal, Valverde, just absolute class. You know, gliding past our defenders like they weren't even there. And then the, the composure to just pass the ball across the, uh, across the six-hour box, past Kepa, and just roll it into the back of the net. And that is the difference between the good and the great. The great teams are able to endure pain, endure suffering, and still score goals. This is the starting 11 that will go up against Atletico Madrid in the first leg. It is probably my strongest team at my disposal. So hopefully we can get a positive result away from home so that it can set us up very well for the second leg at Stamford Bridge. Carlo Ancelotti is one of the most elite managers in world football right now. And he is able to maintain this belief within his players that doesn't matter what the opposition throws at you, even if you go behind, you can win the game. And that is something that I feel us Chelsea players lack because our goal scoring or lack of goal scoring is so prominent. I think that does play on the minds of the Chelsea players. Well in Batty Shield, good recovery after an early mistake there. But you can just see like players like Mudrick when he came on, you know, Kai Havertz when he gets into those areas. He they just look so Oh, good early strike there by Griezmann. But they just look so indecisive and so that they just lack belief in themselves. And it's one of those situations, guys, where sometimes as a manager, you can set up the team tactically in the most flawless way. You can give them the best team talk and give them most, the most positive energy that you can. But at the end of the day, it's the players that are on the field doing the job. And whilst I think Reese James played really well, uh, whilst I think obviously the back line, excluding Trevor Chalobah, was really good, you know, the players are the ones that have to step up and get the job done, and they didn't on this occasion, and that was very, very disappointing. And Atletico Madrid have made a very strong, solid start. And obviously, Lukaku, who we did sell in the January transfer window in order to acquire funds to be, pay, to be able to pay for all the uh, incomings that we had in real life, is obviously playing for Atletico Madrid today. And that is not going to be fun if he scores, because I'll be very, very upset. Oh, off the crossbar. Oh, nice strike there. When you play football at the highest level, which the Champions League is, games are often decided by the fine margins. And when you think of the Kante effort towards the beginning of the game that he missed, when you think of the Cucurella chance that he absolutely squandered uh, just before half time, those are the opportunities that as elite footballers, you have to bury. There's no excuse. If that Cucurella goal went in, which he should have, he should have hit that first time with his right foot as soon as it came to him. But instead, he takes the touch, tries to slot it in with his left foot, and by the time that happens, Courtois has already set his, set his feet and got himself into position. So th these are the moments that make or break it a team being successful. And unfortunately, I think when you make those mistakes, it sets you up for failure in your mind because it requires such mental toughness and honestly even when you miss those opportunities it just puts you into such a negative state of mind and, and, and again makes you question your abilities and the belief and the trust in the manager's system and as soon as that first Rodrigo goal went in in the 58th minute or whatever it was you could just see the players heads drop because the realization sets in of it's over. We can't recover a three goal uh, deficit. And that's when players started just going, you know, balls to the wall. The substitutions weren't amazing. They should have been made probably sooner. Um, but again, it was just one of those situations where it was all too little too late. And 
the boys ran out of legs and the fatigue set in, which allowed for that second goal to go in. So, as disappointing as it was to go down by two goals to nil, I don't think that was a fair uh, reflection of the scoreline. You know, we probably deserved to get a goal based off how well we played in the build-up, but at the end of the day, if you don't score a goal, there's obviously some factor that has led to that, and the factor was ourselves, and we weren't able to capitalise on the chances we created, which we've been doing all bloody season. Havertz is in here. His pace and acceleration should get the upper hand here. Oh, no one to pass to there. Atletico Madrid defenders were in the right spot. Oh! Chow Felix against his former team. Not able to bury the shot there. Good save there. Well, they haven't created too much lately, but the fans know this is a chance to take the lead here. Whenever it comes... Just clear it away. Surely it's half time. Come on, referee. It's going to hit the third minute before you blow it. Just about. Half time. Atletico Madrid definitely looked like the better side. We've created one chance, so there is a possibility of scoring away from home. But... We just have to maintain defensive solidity because if we make a mistake, they will score. I also want to give credit to Kai Havertz tonight because I think he played well, but the reality is as good as a hybrid player he is as a sort of combination between a 9 and a 10, that centre forward, he's just not an imminent goal threat. And whilst he can link up play and be a good uh, passing option sort of just ahead of the midfielders, He's not going to be the one that gets into the box to score headers or to score those poachers' efforts, you know, those tap-ins. And that's something that Benzema has done so very well. And whilst we didn't see much of him tonight at all, Benzema, like, that's the difference between um, the top-level strikers. Are, able, are they able to get into the right positions and help your team score? And that's what Benzema does so very well. If he's not getting on the score sheet, he's creating space for players like Vinicius Jr. and for Rodrigo to score those goals. And Havertz, as well as he played tonight, he just, again, is not the man for us to carry our attacking play going forward into the Chelsea future. That's a good pass there. Good tackle there by James. Oh, he's put Felix in. Oh, he's offside. I was going to say, it did look off in real time, but the fact that the assistant referee didn't call his whistle until the very last second suggested in my mind that he might have been on, but as you can see, they're well off. Oh, of course it had to be him. Absolute disgrace. Anyone but him. Oh, so frustrating. Not con not so much conceding, but the fact that it's Lukaku, the man that literally threw our club under the bus and basically quit on us. Oh, what a terrible pass by James. A huge mistake there. Oh, thankfully Lukaku has dribbled it away from the danger area, but it's not over yet. Well in. Come on, counter-attack now, lads. Ah, uh, missed time. The opportunity to pass to Havertz. Oh, Chilwell, he's fatigued. Oh, a curling effort from deep. Alrighty, in the 78th minute, we're going to make some substitutions. I've replaced both our wing-backs because they were slightly fatigued, and I think that if we get Madweke and Mudrik into dangerous positions, we might be able to score a goal. So hopefully they don't make any mistakes in defense and allow the Atletico Madrid attackers to get in behind them. 
Well in. Oh, Bamiyang. He's in! Oh, the super sub. He comes in and he absolutely delivers in the most critical moment. Wow! Substitution came on with fresh legs and delivered his exact purpose. Pierre Emerick Bamiyang has scored the equaliser here. What a great goal! A superb run. A great timed, a greatly timed pass by Mason Mount there. And he's able to bypass the goalkeeper just, oh, getting it in between his legs. Wow, what a huge goal. The man that has been absolutely black sheep in real life has come up in the career mode and delivered the goods. Madweke, you can see him not a natural defender, not getting into the right positions. Someone. Oh, Mendy pushing it into the danger area and t instead of gobbling it up. Very, very lucky there that, a, that an Atletico Madrid player was not in a, a good spot to score there. And a terrible, terrible corner. And Mendy is able to collect that one. Thank goodness for that. 1-1 one, one is the final score. And I must say, I am happy with this result. Going away from home and securing a draw, I think does set us up well to play well at Stamford Bridge and get a positive result. So, lots to play for in the next game. Aubameyang was the one that stepped up tonight and got us the goal as a substitution. And I must say, if you are gonna throw any criticism towards Frank Lampard and his managing tonight, I think it would be towards the substitutions and their timing. I do believe that Mason Mount should have come on for Matteo Kovacic and being that more central creative player. But as good as Kovacic is, he's not a deadly attacking player in the attacking third. So he was never going to be one to create a goal for us. And I think Mudrik should have come on to replace Kukurella to be a more dominant attacking threat on that left-hand side much earlier. But by the time those players came on, the game was over. So the mentality shifted and it was just all over Red Rover. Does the draw give you the advantage now? That I do agree with. Uh, let's be stronger at home. Was that a game you could have lost today? Absolutely. Like I said, Atletico Madrid, they had chances. But so did we. And we were able to capitalize with the Aubameyang chance. So I'm going to say we were resilient today. Is Felix now a squad player in your eyes rather than a regular starter? That is a fantastic question that I think also relates to real life. And I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you think that we should continue to pursue Jao Felix in the next transfer window and secure him permanently? Because when he first came to the club and made such a positive start, I thought, yeah, we've got to get this guy, sign him up. But in recent weeks, when times have got tough, he's gone missing. He's become a ghost. And if that's a player that has a weak mental toughness and isn't able to endure these moments and step up when times are toughest, maybe he's not a long-term Chelsea player. To answer this question though, I'm gonna go with this one. I expect more from Jao. Now, because we have exited the Champions League, because there's nothing to play for in the Premier League, Frank Lampard has a very tough job of convincing the fans to stay on board and be supportive, but also to get the players to actually commit and give good performances towards the end of the season. Because Chelsea is not a mid-table team. We are not one of those clubs that can just coast throughout a season and accept mediocrity. And this is going to be a very difficult last month and a bit for Frank Lampard. But if he has any sense, what he'll do is he'll make some radical changes to the starting lineup. And again, reinvest in the youth that is at our disposal and help uh, harvest and, and, and make the younger players better in our team and hopefully this is a starting lineup that we see moving forward under Lampard for the rest of the season. I want to see Mudrik play, I want to see Madweke play, I want to see Fafana play. These young talents that are hungry, that have desire to wear the badge and perform at their very best because you're going to have players like Ziyech, like Aubameyang who don't give two tosses 
probably Raheem Sterling as well. They don't care. They just want to be out the club or just want to collect a paycheck. So those players, we can't rely on them. There's no point investing in them. So get these young players in, try and train them up, give them minutes on the field, and hopefully allow them to get some momentum on so that when the new manager comes in after Lampard, they can show that they've got class to perform at the highest level. So if Lampard can get a team you know, similar to this out on the field, that is something I can get behind because there's no point playing players like Ziyech or Aubameyang or Sterling or even Kai Havertz for that matter. So hopefully some radical changes are coming towards the end of this season because that's the only thing I can get behind with regards to the very tragic and sad ending towards the end of our season. Coming up against Leeds United at Ellen Road, this is a team in real life that looks like it could potentially get relegated. They are severely out of form and look like a shadow of their former selves. Oh, bad pass there. Good interception there by Enzo. Fofana. Oh, not yet. Oh, Mudrick, surely. Oh. Leeds allowed him to do the 180 turn there. Got a shot off, but it was a weak, tame effort. And the keeper, Melier, was able to pan it away. Reese James, whip it in. No one is there. Get a positive touch, Modric. He does. Oh. Oh, David Dutro for Fana. The man on his debut in the career mode is in the right spot at the right time and gets a goal. Well in, son. Fantastic goal there by the Chelsea Blues. Great build-up play, good patience, good passing. But Leeds got to do better from a defensive standpoint. Can't allow players with that, much, with that skill level that much space. And Fafana, what a goal, son. Powered into the bottom right-hand corner. Melier blocked was his vision. Couldn't see where the ball was going to go. And Grand Potter claps his hands because we have got the first goal of this game. Well in, son. James. Now Chelsea in a position of menace. Oh, Chilwell. Well, he recovered the ball well, but unfortunately not able to beat the defender there. Thankfully, we still got it. Oh, Mudrick with a bit of flair, getting another shot off. He's really swinging into his right foot there and getting some good curlers but not on target, just lacking that bit of clinical edge that he so desperately needs. Well, almost at half time here, and it's Chelsea on top. Stuart, interested to get your thoughts as regards what they've put into the game. Well, I think they've been the better side in this first half. They've defended well, they've looked dangerous in attack, and they've controlled the midfield. It's been a solid performance so far. And news of a goal at the Etihad Stadium. Alex Scott. It's his second goal for Manchester City. After a well-worked move, he got himself on the end of a cross with a beautiful header. They're back in this now with 36 minutes played. Alex, thank you very much. And the pass not finding its target. It's a very fierce contest in the midfield right now. Almost getting in behind on several occasions for both teams. Badia Shield makes a good tackle. Gets a pass to Mudrick almost. Doesn't quite reach the target. Good interception. Rebound straight back to the Leeds player. Oh, and Chilwell does so very well. Mudrick with his pace and acceleration does so very well, but can't beat the halftime whistle. We're up by a goal to nil. Good start to the game. Very exciting stuff. Enzo, surely. What a turn. And the... 
pace that he showed there to be able to get onto his right foot and strike the ball there was absolutely exquisite. Should have done better with the shot. All right, let's whip this in. I would love to celebrate in front of those Chelsea fans behind us. Batty Ashil! Batty Ashil! No way! I would say the first effort didn't go in, but the second effort was had to be buried because the keeper made an absolute meal out of it. And the Chelsea fans at Ellen Road go absolutely ballistic because we've scored two goals in this game. Get in, son. Alrighty, I've decided to take Fafana off. He's done his job. He's got a goal. He's made a positive impact. But I've brought on Armando Broja. A player that has got so much pace that I can't wait to see what he can do in this game. Hopefully he can get a, set, a third goal for us because that would be fan-bloody-tastic. He's already made a good positive contribution with it, winning the header there. Oh, weak, weak shot by Enzo Fernandez there. Come on, he should be doing better than that. How about the cross? And with that, the attack fizzles out. Could be a chance to break here. Oh, he's in. <laughs> Absolutely bamboozled. What an absolutely incredible solo goal by Armando Broja there. That was fan-bloody-tastic. He runs over to the Chelsea fans, slides on his knees, fist bumps. <laughs> credit where credit is due. He somehow bypassed the Leeds defender there. And the fact that the angle is so tight, you have to point fingers at Melier there. He should do better. That is awful goalkeeping. But also, Brozier, the fact he's able to maintain his composure on his weak foot and slot it in. That is an incredible goal. And the substitutions to secure the result have just come on now. Wow, 3-0 at Ellen Road. I am so very, very impressed with the performance here. Oh, I should have shot. I was like, can we intricately get into Jao Felix there? Unfortunately not. All right, trying to get ahead of ourselves. Probably could have been a lot more simple, a lot more precise. But we have secured three points with three goals. And Chelsea are victorious in this game at Ellen Road against Leeds United. Very, very impressed with the performance. David Dracho Ufafana in his debut in the career mode, scoring a goal, and what a goal it was. Brozier coming on as well. I was absolutely amazed. That's two times in this episode, super subs have come on and got the job done. And of course, the Badia Shield goal from the corner. That was a bit lucky, but I ain't complaining. Three goals, three points, and we've got the W. Well, hopefully this performance here has been able to put a smile on your face from the disappointment that has come in real life with the defeat to Real Madrid. That is my goal for the rest of this series as we trudge towards the end with no bright lights at the uh, finish line. I'm going to try and create as much Chelsea entertainment for you guys, create as many attacking opportunities, score as many good goals as possible so that we can have some fun as Chelsea fans and discussing whatever Frank Lampard decides to do towards the end of this season. A routine win today, are you satisfied? We want to be consistent. That is one of the things that we have struggled with severely in this career mode, is being able to get on a good run of form and you know maintain pressure on the opposition. And here we've got a win. In the last game, we got a draw against Atletico Madrid. If we can secure a victory in the second leg, this might be the start of good things on the horizon. What an outstanding performance. What made the difference? We took our chances and that was the difference. Thanks so much for watching Chelsea fans. Securing victory in this game against Leeds has definitely upped my spirits, has made me a little bit more happy, but the disappointment of going out of the Champions League and our season coming to a very 
disappointing end is obviously going to stick with us because I think this will be our worst ever season since I can remember, definitely in the last 20 years since Abramovich came to the club. And mediocrity is not celebrated here at the Chelsea Football Club. So let's just get to the end of the season and hopefully in the transfer window, we, we just get rid of all the dead wood. We get a top class manager in that has a clear vision and a plan and can drill these players in a way that just makes them work in a super cohesive manner. Because next season, we need to be going for the Premier League because we won't have European football to, to deal with and we need to be doing better. We need to be returning to the Champions League because that is where this club in West London belongs. Thanks so much for watching. Smash that like button. Comment your thoughts on everything that happened in real life as well as this episode. Make sure you got notifications turned on so that you get notified as soon as videos go live on the channel. And of course, until the next episode, Come on you blues. Hey.